So how does disloyalty start? I, I believe no one really plans to destroy their life, right? No one really plans to be disloyal. In fact, a lot of people, maybe even most people, don't even know they're being disloyal. But we need to find out because this is how Satan operates, underground, undercover, with deception. So we need to find out the pathway to disloyalty. Understand God has a pathway for loyalty. The pathway of disloyalty has a bad ending. The pathway of loyalty has a great ending. And we need to understand how they both operate. So today we're going to talk about the pathway to disloyalty. You need to understand how it starts, how it ends. All right, number one, you make a list. Number one, it starts with an independent spirit. Now, all of us are individuals. We all have creativity. We all have ideas. That's great. But an independent spirit begins to operate outside of the one that they're under in authority. They began to, began to kind of just twist things a little bit, began to add to the instructions, but decide to procrastinate maybe, or I have a better idea. These people don't mean harm, but an independent spirit wants to be in control, wants to have the latest gossip, wants to put, 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 you know, put, posture themselves as in the know. This is an independent spirit. And you can't let that continue without mentoring that person because it doesn't stay that way. How can you recognize independent spirit, give them something to do they don't want to do? They'll start bucking it, changing it, better idea, whatever. You can always, they'll, it'll show itself. All right, now what happens if you try to correct an independent spirit? What happens? Not always, we pray not, but offense. Now that's their choice, that's their choice, but correction typically many times brings an offense and that person actually leaves. If they leave, quit the job, they're one of the ones you'll hear, I've had 50 jobs in two years. No, this is how, the door keeps going. I mean, it just rotates, rotates, rotates. And so as a pastor, we want you to win in life and live the good life. So you need to understand how these things operate. So number two on your list, Offense, Matthew 24, 10 says, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Listen, offended people betray, and they foster hatred and division. Offended people are, are dangerous, friend, dangerous. Offended people do not receive correction. The Bible says a righteous person invites correction. Now, offended people very quickly move to what number three is, the passive stage. They move from the front row to the middle of the rows to the end row to the golf course. <laughs> I can always tell if someone always sits in the same seat, you know, they're moving back. I, okay, what's going on? You know, then I see what happens. They disconnect from dream teams. They get off all the teams. They stop serving. They stop being involved. I know something's happening, right? The passive stage, people become uninvolved. We have to ask, as a pastor, we have to ask why, because people that love God are involved. People that love God are involved. I'm involved. I love my wife. I'm involved. I'm not passive. There's evidence of my love for her. I'm not passive. When you love God, there is activity. You're going to have a heart to be involved. You're not going to have to be legally forced to be involved. You're going to want to be involved. Jeremiah 48.10 says this, a curse on the man who is lax in doing the Lord's work, a curse on him who keeps his sword from bloodshed. Meaning when you're in a battle and you're not participating in the battle, you're not on the team. And the Bible says you're not going to have the blessing of God on your life. So you want to walk in blessing? Stay involved. Staying involved is healthy spiritually, but stay involved. A passive person moves very quickly now to the critical stage, which is number four. They've disconnected. They have a critical mindset. Everything's now being filtered through this critical picture they have, and they become critical. Now, this critical stage, again, now moves quickly into what we call number five, the political stage. The political stage is now they're going to get a crowd around them that agrees to justify their attitudes, their lack of being involved. They're going to get people around them that agree with them. 
One of the greatest stories in the Bible, not great at what happened, but a great story is the story of Absalom in the Bible. A very famous story. King David had a Abs- son, Absalom. He had a son, Amnon. Absalom and Amnon were of two different wives, two different women. Absalom had a sister named Tamar. Amnon, her half-brother, raped her. Absalom, her full brother, was furious about this, and King David did nothing about Amnon. So Absalom put a plot in place to kill Amnon, which he did. He then fled Jerusalem for three years, and then he came back after, I think, two more years, uh, he came back to Jerusalem, but secretly he had no respect for David. He was offended. Now, I'm not saying his offense was not, in this case, maybe justified somewhat, but it's a great picture of what offense looks like, how it operates in 2 Samuel chapter 15. So I want to turn there quickly and, and take a look at it. Verse number one. Now, again, this is when Absalom comes back. Uh, he's been estranged from David. He's been out of Jerusalem now for five years. He comes back, and now he is in the area. In the course of time, Absalom provided himself with a chariot and horses and with 50 men to run ahead of him. He would get up early and stand by the side of the road leading to the city gate. Whenever anyone came with a complaint to be placed before the king for a decision, Absalom would call out to him, what town are you from? He would answer, your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, look, your claims are valid and proper, but there is no representative of the king to hear you. And Absalom would add, if only I were appointed judge in the land, then everyone who has a complaint or case could come to me and I would see that he gets justice. That is how it works, friend. Absalom was not in the palace. He was not even in the city. He was outside the city. This is how it happens. It happens behind the scenes. It's not open yet. Uh, from my experience, it happens to, it, it, it preys on the babies. It happens on the immature. Uh, th- th- these people that want to, to get a crowd, they work, these, they work with these people. And you need to watch that. This leads to number six, the deception stage. Now, you know that when someone's deceived, what do we say about people that are deceived, pal? What do they say? They don't know they're deceived because they're deceived. Now, at this point, along this pathway, there's hope. You know, if we bring correction, we bring truth, there's some hope that we can get these people turned around. But in the deception stage, they're already hooked hooked into that lie. It's hard to get them out of that stage. The deception stage is, I'm greater than my teacher. You know, I don't, I don't, there's nothing you can tell me. I don't respect you. Uh, there's nothing that, uh, you know, I can tell you what's wrong with you, but I, I can't receive from you. Ezekiel 28, 14 says this, speaking of Lucifer, you are anointed as a guardian cherub for so I ordained you. You remember Lucifer's story, right? Got filled with pride but he forgot where he came from. You see, God is the one that made him that way. Not his rebellion, made him with the talents and giftings that he was so proud of. You know, it's interesting that, you know, we all are different and God made us different. God made us different. Why should we have pride about our giftings and our spiritual giftings? Because we didn't do them. I mean, God gave them to us, right? For a purpose. But Satan, we call Lucifer Satan, forgot where he came from. And so many people don't realize that they're not an island. They didn't make the journey up themselves. There are many people and many people that invested in their life for them to be where they're at, but they have forgotten. The deception stage now leads into number seven, open rebellion. I remember when I told my staff back in the day when I was called to preach, and I was, God told me to launch a church here in New Albany. Of course, I had my company. I called my managers together and say, look, guys, God called me to launch a church here. I kind of told them what was happening. The next Monday, I came into the office. My key manager's office was next to mine. But this particular Monday, I was shocked. He wasn't in his office. He was in my office. 
with his legs, his feet up on my desk. And when I walked in, he didn't take his legs down from my desk. And he said, you know, you're going to pass your church. It's a great thing. But you can't do both. So here's really how I see it. You got three, three choices. You can give me the company. Or you can give the company to all the employees. Or you can just close it down. That's pretty open. <laughs> but no. It's my company, and I say, eh, it's all three. Not happening. Of course, that person left. After open rebellion, this is something you need to remember. I call it number eight, the execution stage. All rebels die in the end. Because who do they attract, friend? Do they attract loyal people? Now, usually, they attract rebels. And rebels will turn on them just as they turned on their leader. And you're going to find out that's how it works, that the rebels always die in the end. When Absalom began to lead his charge to take over the kingdom, David's men went out to fight against Absalom, had to fight against his own son. And Absalom was riding his mule in the battle, and he ran under a tree, and the tree caught his hair, and the mule kept going, and he's now hanging in the air. And he died in that battle. Rebels always die in the end. They may not die a physical death, but they're going to have trouble. Because they attract the wrong kind of people. And you can't build with disloyal people. So listen, the pathway to disloyalty is very subtle. And you have to be aware of it. That's why I covered it today. So you'll be, uh, you know, a, a keen to what Satan's trying to do. You'll be aware of what Satan wants. He wants to get you off track on the wrong pathway. God's pathway always has great reward. 